I can say what we know from science, we've come to recognize that repeated drug use uh, changes the brain in long-lasting ways. And that has led to the concept not just that addiction is a disease of the brain, but that it is a chronic disease, which is very relevant for treatment because it means that you require continued treatment. And in that respect, it's not different from cancer, which we, for most of the cancers, we cannot cure, but we can treat. Mm -hmm. And so is the situation with drug addiction. physical changes in the brain at several levels mm -hmm. that could be seen as molecular cellular scars of the addiction. And these can last a lifetime so that when a person like Philip Seymour Hoffman comes across a drink for the first time or heroin for the first time, the relapse can be very rapid and severe. What are we looking at? Well, what you're looking at there is actually um, we're measuring images um, that, that reflect the concentration of a protein that we call dopamine D2 receptor. And it's a protein that is very important because, because it regulates the function of uh, the cortical processes. It regulates, it actually allows us to exert control. Uh, you see the control subjects and in the center of the brain you see high uh, red areas because that's where you have very high concentration of these D2 receptors. Then you see a methamphetamine abuser with much lower uh, coloring red on the center of the brain because the receptors are down, the dopamine D2 receptor. And then you see a control subject uh, to the, I don't know, I actually have to look back, to your right and you see that color and you also see that in the alcoholic is down. And this is a very typical the change that we observe across a wide variety of addictions. People that are addicted to drugs have a reduction in the expression of these proteins, the dopamine D2 receptors. And these decreases in the expression of dopamine D2 receptors in humans and in animal models, and Eric has done a lot of work here too, actually are associated with impulsive behaviors and a propensity to engage in compulsive behaviors when you are exposed to um, rewarding stimuli. And, and this is because, again, these, these areas in the center of the brain, which we call the striatum, and in these areas, the D2 receptors allows us to regulate the frontal cortex, the frontal areas of the brain here, which are crucial for our ability to exert self-control, whether it is uh, controlling our emotions or our desires. But, but proper signaling through these D2 receptors is necessary for the function of our prefrontal cortices. tremendous, tremendous advances in our understanding about how the brain actually repairs itself. A lot of it driven by work done on the recovery of the brain when someone suffers a stroke. And now the or rehabilitation... TBI, traumatic brain injury. Exactly. The rehabilitation process allows for them to recover significantly function. And we're making advances to try to accelerate that process. So I would say that there, as of now, there is significant recovery, but it's also variable. Some, some people recover faster than others, depends on your age, depends how many drugs that you have had, but it also depends on your genetics. But I also see it as very optimistic, and I'm not one of those fluffy optimisms, optimists, but actually based on what we know of the science, where it's going, that in the future we will be able to accelerate that process of recovery. <laughs> uh, no, I, agree. I think the brain has enormous, enormous reparative processes. And a lot of the things that drugs do to damage the brain are probably reversible. Probably the aspect that persists... Over what amount of time? Well, I think it varies from person to person and type and of change to type of change. But uh, one of the things that lasts the longest is, are the memories associated with drug use and the conditioning, the learning that occurs. Trouble. That's actually very common. And um, I'm also I'm, I'm a clinician as well as a scientist. And I actually wanted to say that there is a lot of hope. I have, I mean, just from my own clinical practice and experience, I've known, um, I've known quite a few people who were able to um, become sober, even from crystal meth and other drugs, and actually really resume a very productive life. Um, but they do talk about uh, drug dreams, and they have different attitudes to cope with those drug dreams. Some people say, okay, they wake up in the morning and they just laugh at it, and they say, okay, I had a drug dream and I can move on. Or even like, okay, I got a chance to try it out without really 
relapsing. <laughs> so they have a positive attitude, and, uh, but some people are really traumatized by it, and it's really hard for them. data that gives you an incline in terms of how addictive drugs are. For example, the epidemiologists who like to measure everything that they can get their hands on actually assess the number of people, the percentage of people that when they get exposed to a drug will become addicted to them, and then they rank them. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, that drug that comes on top is actually nicotine, but that's, that has a caveat because nicotine is legal. So it's a widespread availability increases the likelihood that you will be repeatedly administering it. But if you take just the illegal drugs, um, heroin actually has the highest percentage, something like 25 to 30% of people that get exposed to heroin will become addicted. And then if you take those numbers, you have uh, methamphetamine is also highly addictive. And, and, and then marijuana is probably has the lowest uh, rate, and it's only 9% of people that get exposed will become addicted. But also that depends at what age. So if you are less than 18, 60% of them will become addicted to, to marijuana. So that gives us a mm -hmm. sense in population basis, how do they fare one versus the other, considering just illicit substances. Then we have another way clinically to try to determine, which is when you start to take the drug regularly, how much time does it take you to escalate until you lose control? And in that one, methamphetamine is probably one of the fastest drugs. Within less than one year, you can get people very, very severely addicted. But opiates also create this very fast escalation. And finally, the animal models. So what we, we assign the addictiveness of drugs to their ability, to their potency to increase dopamine in the brain. And of all of the drugs, the most potent drug that we currently know in terms of its ability to increase dopamine is methamphetamine. Hmm. So you take all of this information and you come exactly to the conclusion of what Eric was saying, that probably the most addictive drugs that we have, independent of the fa legality or not legality, have to do with methamphetamine and, and, and heroin. <laughs>